Hello and welcome to this recap of a Code Buddies live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups in virtual hangouts. In yesterday's hangout, we added a new feature to the Western Friend website or extended on a feature of magazine subscriptions. We'll hop over to the website real quick and take a look. For context, on the Wagtail admin, we have a subscription section, which we have worked on in previous sessions. This gives us a table to view all the previous subscriptions and add a new subscription. Uh, the subscription asks for a type, it could be a PDF or print, or both, and how long it should be, and you get a discount for a little bit uh, longer of a subscription. Then it asks for details about the subscriber, including a, a mailing address where relevant. Finally, we have some payment uh, transaction information, whether or not the transaction was successful and the related Braintree ID. Braintree is our uh, chosen payment processor. Let's take a look then at what we did to extend this data model uh, into the front end. After having peer review from Mary Klein, the editor of Western Friend, we agreed that this is a good, good enough model to move forward. But first, a little bit of tea. Okay, so we'll hop back over to the front end here. So essentially what we did is mapped the we created a front end um, page and form. The page has two fields, a title and a, an intro text. This intro we're using throughout the site. Any of the custom pages we define will generally have an intro text. That gives the opportunity to add some details um, that are relevant to that particular page. For example, I can edit this, publish the change. When I view it live, we'll now see that the intro text has been updated. Uh, it can include any arbitrary details the editor wants to inc um, include about the subscription types, postage, things like that. So it's very flexible. Below that, so we have the title and rich text intro here. We have the same subscription data. We'll go ahead and fill this in. I'll grab a three year print only subscription and my recipient's information. When clicking, so really quick, this is just a standard bootstrap form uh, rendered with crispy, uh, Django crispy forms. Uh, so automatically give us a little bit of um, the bootstrap semantics. Um, nothing really special here, just layout with the um, breakpoints and how many columns it should take up. And I think that's about it. So we've got this subscribe button down below. That redirects you to the payment process page, which renders a credit card form from Braintree. This JavaScript is uh, created by Braintree. So we'll take a look at the code in just a moment, but let's go ahead and submit this. And it's paying, payment was successful now. If we go to the Wagtail admin, subscriptions section, uh, pardon the little uh, overlapping here, I'm not sure if this is um, something I can enhance later, but we have a new subscription, regular price for three years. I can inspect that subscription. Uh, it's got a calculated price there. It's paid, this payment was successful. I can edit it, get all the subscriber details here, the address. And if I want to cross-reference it with our payment processor, there's the Braintree ID. Um, I couldn't figure out in Wagtail how to make this a read-only field. It looks like it's a feature request. So it's possible that somebody could edit this and save it. Not the best uh, in this particular case because we don't want to lose that reference. So I added a little help text here that says, please, you know, don't edit. It's used for cross-referencing purposes. Later on, I might come back to this and figure out how to make it read-only. For now, let's take a look at the code. I mentioned already on the left-hand side, um, we have the subscription index page that has an intro and a title, as well as some form fields. The most interesting part of the coding, and uh, is a little bit challenging, uh, was to define the model for a subscription index page and help um, take those form submission and validate the data. So we created a class called subscription index page. It inherits from the Wagtail default page 
class, which has a lot of uh, functionality for free. It gives us a title, does some slug uh, handling, and gives us a reverse path, searching and optimization, a lot of good stuff. So building on this page keeps things in our software consistent and gives a good developer experience where it's relevant. And since we do have a title, it was a good candidate. Uh, added a custom rich text field for the intro text and just display the intro text to the end user in the admin UI. We don't want any pages below the subscription index page, so that's an empty list there, and there should only be one subscription index page. Now, when rendering the page, um, I want to pass the form in so we could render that in the template here, this form here. And the key thing that was a little bit of a gotcha, uh, the, you can't import this at the top level, at least the way our code is organized, because this subscription create form is defined in a file here. And it references the model, the subscription model, which is defined in models.py. I think at the time these models are instantiated or something along those lines. Um, this form field was not available, or at least there was like a circular reference issue. I'm not sure what the problem was, but inside of the subscription create form, it has a reference to the subscription, uh, which is defined inside of this in this model model module. Excuse me. So in any case. The takeaway here is that if you're having troubles with weird import errors uh, and you're trying to use something inside of a function, a class method, uh, it might be a good opportunity just to do your imports right in, inside the method, which was a little bit redundant. I had to do that too, twice, but so it goes. So from let's look at the get context and we'll look at the serve method and figure out, or I'll explain what the difference is between those. Context is what gets passed into the template. It's the data that you get to render into the template in these sort of string interpolation tags. So we have a you know page object in the context that has some properties and a form object. Now, Wagtail page model automatically passes these page object into the context, but it doesn't pass our form. It doesn't know we want to pass this form in there. So all I had to do was get the context from the instance itself and add a property to the context dictionary, which re uh, references our subscription create form. Returning that context passes it right into the template there, and then I could refer to it as whatever the key was here. The other thing we need to do is when the form is submitted, oops, actually this is at the top, it's gonna post the data to the server at the same uh, route. This is not, this action is not necessary uh, anymore, but for older, for backwards compatibility and older browser support, uh, you, leave, you can leave the action there and put a hash to indicate that it's going to submit it to the same URL. Now this serve method is um, essentially Wagtail's uh, equivalent of a Django view. Wagtail does a lot of things for you without having to do, without having to think about it, including mapping um, URLs, um, generating forms in the admin section and creating views. Uh, but when you do need to override the view handling, then you would define the serve method of the page instance. And here, all we do is get a uh, reference to the subscription creation form. We check if we're getting post data, meaning the form has been submitted, and grab the post data and create a new form with that post data we call subscription data for clarity. Then we can check if it's valid. If it's valid, we'll go ahead and create a subscription out of that and get the ID of the newly created subscription right here and assign it to this a session variable. And we will re then redirect to the payment processing screen. Otherwise, we're just going to, if it's not a post request, we're just going to serve um, the normal page view. Really briefly on the form, and then we'll look at the the payment process review in just a second. Uh, subscription create form is pretty straightforward. It's just telling it's a model form, telling it to use the subscription and a number of fields and overriding a couple of the labels, uh, mainly for localization in the United States um, address uh, schema, so to speak. The final thing we'll look at is this 
payment process view. We had written this payment process relating to the bookstore in a, a, quite a number of sessions ago, I suppose. And I didn't want to just kind of copy and paste all this code. I'd, I want to try to reuse things to the extent possible. So the changes we needed here, it was uh, focused on bookstore orders. So I just need to make it more general purpose to handle orders or subscriptions. Now, one thing we have to make sure is that we're not going to have both an order and a subscription coming in here somehow at the same time or an old session variable sticking around from a, a bookstore order uh, because it'll check the bookstore order first and then grab a related um, order entity. Uh, but this might not be the context we might be trying to do to subscribe. So down below, I'll show you how I handle that. But in any case, we, we're pretty sure that there won't be an order ID and a subscription ID in the session context. So if we can't find an order ID, then it should have a subscription ID. There might be a case where there's neither, uh, and I'm not handling that here, so I'll admit that. But if it um, finds a subscription ID, we're gonna try to get it from the database, the subscription table. And they're both just an entity, database entities. So we're gonna check if it's a post, which, um, this, and if so, we're gonna get this payment nonce, which um, is generated uh, of the card data. Uh, so to sp I think, I'm not sure exactly how the nonce works, but it's we're not actually handling the card data on the server side, we're not storing it, we're not really touching it here. So Braintree makes this really secure by passing in this nonce, and then we create a Braintree transaction with the total cost. I had to just make sure that both the orders and subscriptions have this get total cost method, and add the nonce, and settle it right away, submit it for settlement. Um, then make sure it was success, mark the entity as paid, and store the transaction ID in the related entity so in the subscription that way we can cross-reference those here's the key um, we clear out the session variables at this point to make sure there's no more subscription or order id present in either case and redirect to the done otherwise we, we can redirect to cancel and the user would have to restart if it's just a get request we're going to generate this um, brain tree token and render the payment form and let the user enter their data and then the Braintree JavaScript handles it on the client side. This is standard JavaScript. We didn't edit this during the live coding session. Uh, this comes directly from the Braintree documentation. In any case, uh, this is a pretty much high level summary of what we accomplished in this uh, live coding task. The main uh, thing I learned was that um, Wagtail page models have this serve method that basically acts as a a Django view, the same thing you would write at view.py, views.py for, uh, you can now do also in Wagtail. You can define writing your Wagtail page models. So again, this has been a continuing live coding series on Code Buddies. Hope to see you around the community. There's a lot of other great uh, coders here. We're all teaching and learning from one another. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.